<clears throat> all right i don't know if i'm editing if this is gonna be unedited because i have something in my head so we'll see how this goes but this is actually a haul um i've got some stuff um and this is a little bit of accumulation um more so from the last almost two months not quite maybe a month six weeks or so but anyway got some stuff for you all got some stuff to show let's talk about it all right so let's get started now i have to be now this particular haul is got a lot of unique things in them some are brand new there's going to be a first impression toward the end um but these are all things that some that are just like on my radar one thing is on everybody's radar but the majority of the stuff i just happen to be into wanted to want it so you're not gonna see you know the usual the regular smugglers and that's for people who don't know me who come in and see a haul and be like yes well why is she talking about this it's just not happening but let's talk about the things that i do have so the first thing i have and of course this isn't going to be full-on conversation about them because that will come in the good the bad and the man so the first thing i'm going to talk about is this this is afnon's rare passion this is the newest one i guess we're going to call it the flanker to rare tiffany is there an afnon rare we should, we should check that out but anyway <laughs> this is the newest one it's a rose scent that's all i'm going to say i'm not going to tell you anymore but it's a rose scent so there we go so that's that now this is the one that we all we it we, I was told about it. I saw it. I overpaid for it. And then it went down. But it's probably going to go back up again. Maybe. This is the Latafa's Body Out Oud Honor and Glory. Now, this is a really... I love the white. Now, everybody thinks it's going to be a dupe of, of course, one of the initials. But I think... Latafa is moving away from that and just doing the body out ooze because they're seeing that they're popular on their own. So I will say this, this is not a dupe of any um, initials. Even though it looks like the initio bottle for some of their things, this is not a dupe. I can promise you that. I can promise you that now. When I talk about it later, I'll say some stuff about it because people are so annoying to me, but I'm going to leave it alone. So we're going to stop right there. So this is Honor and Glory, Body Out Oud, Honor and Glory. All right. Now, everything here is super unique. And when I say that, it's because, well, a couple of this there's another one that's not super unique, but the majority of these things are being rarely sp spoke upon in female FRAGCOM. Let me say that, female FRAGCOM. Um, please, in male FRAGCOM too. Because I did do searches. I was like, oh, let me see about this. But before I get started, um, I got a couple of things in my head I want to talk about. And what I want to talk about is because I've been seeing this, y'all. Now, most of you all are my old hoes, and we understand this before I say it. But for the new people who are just getting into fragrances, niche is not a barometer for quality. It just really is. It is not a gauge for quality. It doesn't mean that it's if it says niche, oh my God, I'm going to get this perfectly great fragrance. Niche just means and if you know what niche means because many of us are ni are in a niche which is a specific genre so a niche house is just a, a brand that all they do is perfume that's it it doesn't now it doesn't speak on if it's going to be super quality or if it, or even if it's going to be something that's just going to be stunning and stand out it just means that that's it. That's all. Hell, if I started something, I could call myself a niche brand. Now, of course, people would be like, no, you're indie because you're small. You know what? Whatever. I'm niche. I'm indie. Whatever. 
but I need y'all to stop equating it with something special. Like it makes it special because it's a niche brand. I actually saw somebody saying, I came up with this because in a comment, somebody, they were talking about dupes. Now let's get into the dupe conversation. Then on top of it, we are in the space where we are embracing the dupes. I mean, it's a, it's a real thing, you know, and there is a, 10,011 dupes of certain fragrances. And so now we're getting this backlash with the luxury people showing that none of them still aren't as good as this, like BR540, Lost Cherry, Delina, well, the, uh, what's another one? Aventus, and uh, Kirky, or Herba Pure, or whatever you want to talk about. <sighs> First off, I'm going to need you to get out of your elitist, classist uh, space that you're in. I'm going to need you to step away from that. It's okay that you buy it. It really is. It's nothing. If you want to spend the money and buy them retail and everything and say, I got it, pray more power to you. But see, here's the issue with dupes and the people who who really are vehement against them and have something to say about them and everything. That's a classist space you're in. The re an elitist space. Because the problem that you're having is not because all these companies are making dupes. Because, and you have, you have the BR540. Your problem is, is that the dupes smell so much like the BR540 or the Lost Cherry or whatever they're duping that you no longer in your mind stand out because anybody can get it. And you felt good about your choices when you could afford this 300 and something, $355 bottle and you knew a lot of the people around you couldn't. Well, now somebody can get that same scent for 45 And so you pissed. Not because you have some... You know, you worried about Francis, Francis Kirk John making his money or Tom Ford making his money because guess what? They are. You're mad because it brings down your vibe on a notch in your head. See, that's where the problem is. With every, with the majority of people who have problems with dupes, that's where your I know y'all not, not going to admit that because you're going to talk about, no, it's the artistry and everything and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Now, yes. When you dupe someone that's a small brand, then yes, there is some problem. I, I will say that is smacks of being just irritating. But the ones they're duping are the large companies that ain't losing a dime if someone buys a lovely Cherie instead of a Lost Cherry. Because the person who's going to go and buy the Lost Cherry is going to buy it. They are. They're going to buy that Tom Ford. They're not going to buy the Maison Alhambras and the other companies that make it. They're going to buy because they want that brand. They're not losing any money off of my $40. And you know why they're not losing any money? Let me tell you why. Because I wasn't going to buy it anyway. I wasn't going to go into Neiman, Nordstrom's, or wherever those some of those fragrances are and put down my credit card and pay retail for it. Now, I might get it if I can get it on a good deal, but I'm not going to do that. So they have not lost a sale because this is what the, this is. This is the conversation that so many have. That it's like they're, you know, first off, why are you worried about Tom Ford's pocket or Kirk John's pocket? Because I promise you, look at how they live and they're not hurting. But you're not worried about that. They're and in the first place, Tom don't even own it no more. That's Estee Lauder, which is a huge company. They're not losing a dime on a sale for that. Because the people who are buying the Amber Ouds and the Chagoff Ouds and all of those things were never, probably never going to buy the originals. Person who's going to buy the original is going to buy it. Whether they, have, whether they have a dupe or not, they're just going to buy it because they want it. Because this is a luxury. It isn't, it isn't a necessity. And to make it this much and to put all this argument and debate 
into something about, first off, you debating and upset about how somebody else spends their money and enjoys their money. So I have a problem with that too, because listen, you spend your 300, I don't care. <clears throat> I'm not, that's on you. That's, Hey, more power if it makes you happy. If you smell good and it, great, but how dare you try to rain on somebody's parade because they can't afford what you can afford and how dare they have the ability to smell just as good as you and not have to shell out $300 and feel luxury, quiet, luxury, luxurious or whatever you want to call it. See, that's where the problem is. It's not about the dupe companies. It's not about the people who are buying the dupes. Mm -mm. It's about it, it brings down what you have a notch. Now, if you hear that, I know now, here's the thing. If that hit a nerve and you unsubscribe, I understand because sometimes the truth does hurt and we don't want to hear it. But that's the truth of it for a, quite, quite a few people who are talking about that. So remember, when you're watching these videos and they come in with all their reasons for it and how terrible it is, remember, it's not about that. It is about the fact that now their, their exclusivity has been messed with. All right, so let's go on with this haul. I felt like I should have said, remember on 60 Minutes, Andy Rooney? I felt like I just had an Andy Rooney moment. I feel like he should be like right here saying, saying his ending, ending right here. All right. So anyway, let's talk. I'm going to start here because this is the only, this is the one that is a niche of all of these unique ones. And the, the reason why I say they're unique is because I usually do a search to see, do I, can I find anybody really talking about them? And when you pull up something and you can barely find five people talking about something, it's really not that popular. But let's talk. This is Chopard's Imperial Iris Malika. Let me show y'all that. This is stunning, but I'm not going to get into it because it's not the, the good, the bad, the man. But this is an iris fragrance by Chopard. I love the purple of the bottle. Look at how beautiful that bottle is, though. That's so cute. This is so cute. Okay, so this is Chopard's Iris Malika. Then I got this. I got Atelier Cologne's Rose Anonymi. This is the extra. So now we know Atelier Cologne, of course, does cologne, sort of like Joe Malone. But this is the extra, this is the Eau de Parfum. So this is the actual more, this is the stronger concentration. Um, I was able to find this on Joma Shop at a really good deal because supposedly Atelier Cologne is no longer selling here in America. But I'm assuming that means retail because the gray market got them all day long. So this is Rose Anonymy Extra. Then we have this, my pom pom. This is my Folie d'un Soir. I'm not going to talk about it right now. I know y'all like, what she wants to say, but I'm not going to say a word about what it smells like. <laughs> but just know, I had to have my next, <clears throat> the latest pom pom. It's been out for about a year. I was just waiting for it to get it, you know, for me to find it at a better price. I didn't, it's probably going to, it's going to go down, but I don't care because I really want it. Folie d'un soir. It's so, just look at that. The blue one and now the brown, the pom-poms. If you know me, if, if you know, you know. Now this one is kind of, this is, this, I know some ladies who love this. I don't know if, you know, really people talk about this one because I didn't look this one up because it's a BDK and you know, people like BDK, but they like Gris Chanel. They like Passe Soir. They like Rouge Smoking. Um, but I don't know if Tuberose Imperial has had its moment the way it should. I'm just saying, I don't know if it's had its moment the way it should, but I'm saying it should have had a moment. Mm. Mind blown. Okay, so that's Tuberose Imperial. Then I got this. I got Montauk's Vanilla Ecstasy. 
And I have to be honest, I don't know why I bought this fragrance. Like I, say, I said this when I did the live hauls. And I have shown these in live hauls, but I just wanted to do a video for the people who don't like to watch my live streams. So you can watch it on a video. This is Vanilla Ecstasy. This is a vanilla apricot. And now Sweet Vanilla is Vanilla Apricot. But this has a few, this has more... Um, notes. So I was curious about it because I do want sweet vanilla, but this one sounded a little more elegant, a little more sophisticated. I will tell you about it soon. But yeah, this is Vanilla Ecstasy by Montal. I all of a sudden thought I should get all of the Montal vanillas. I'm 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 fighting that urge because once I get that hit in my head, it's hard for me not to do it. But anyway, <laughs> let's keep going. Then we have. Strawberry and Cream by Myth Bangkok. So this is a Thailand company. I was able to get this from the lovely Jessica Trim. She is selling off a lot of her fragrances for a move that she's doing soon. And so I was able to get this from her. And it is lovely. And it is stunning. And I'm, you know, we'll talk about it. But yeah, it's Strawberry and Cream. So there's that. Then I got this. This is Mosque Milano's Petra. Now I'm going to show this to you because this is a simple 30 mil, but what makes it stunning is this on the, this is, this part of the packaging is killer. Look at this. This is where the name is Petra. And then the name of the perfumer, Cecile Zorokian. I didn't know it was going to come like that, but now I want more Mask Milano's. There is a couple more that I actually want. I think Madeline and Lost Alice. Maybe Love Kills. I don't think I try Love Kills, but Lost Alice definitely. And I'm pretty sure Madeline. But anyway, that's when I opened. I said, this is, this is stunning. Okay. This is stunning. So anyway, yes, this is Mask Milano's Petra. And then finally of this part of the haul is Amouage Ashore. Now I have, I'm being real honest with y'all. This, this whole collection really just kind of like got thrown under the rug. I think because it came out during the pandemic, because I know they came out with these sort of the end of 2020 and we was all in the midst of the pandemic. So even though we were buying fragrances, I think, I think the issue was people weren't going out and trying fragrances, of course, because we couldn't. And so this kind of was thrown out there because I'm sure they had been planning this, of course, before the pandemic and it just got thrown out there. So I have actually tried this. So I could tell y'all about it. Okay, I could tell y'all. So this is because this ain't part of the good, the bad, and the man. So I actually tried this at Neiman a while ago. Somehow I wound up at Neiman, which is very rare. And I tried it. And when I was leaving, I was like, ooh, I really liked it. Um, and I, I I decided, yeah, I think I want a shore. And so I didn't get to try it on my skin or anything, but then I've got it. And I can say that it's even better than I remembered. This is a stunning, beautiful, just gorgeous jasmine. Now, it has a spiciness because it has turmeric and pink pepper on the tops. And then you get this really <clears throat> light, airy jasmine. It's not endolic. It is very much like a shore, like, you know, a beachy vibe, a summertime vibe <clears throat> this is definitely something i've been wearing it already i've already gotten lots of com i've already got compliments on it because it smells so good and it does last because the two times i have i wasn't like um i had it on for a while so this is i'm a wash ashore Whew. Whew. and speaking of that let me say this i think some of us need to back off of the whole how long it lasts. Um, because for me, I'm finding out that I'm pretty much, I get a nice mix of fragrances pretty easily. And the reason why I notice is because when people give me compliments sometimes, I can barely smell it. So it's always amazing to me that they're smelling it when I walk past them. And this has happened quite a few times. 
So I'm saying that to say that's probably a good reason, good, good reason why I don't talk about the longevity as much as some people, because honestly, a lot of times I think I'm agnostic to things, but okay, that's that. Now this, I got a package. So let me tell you about this package. Um, I, I actually posted this on my community tab. And I said I got it with some Ulta points, which I did. So what happened is, is that I saw this and I was debating it. And it's new, which we know we like new bad new fragrances. I did. Um, but I love this. I love this line. Now I have to be honest, the last two I didn't buy because I was so thoroughly disappointed with the one before that. But this one came out. This is La Entre de Givon, La Entre de Rouge Ultime. Now, we know La Entre de Rouge is that girl. You know, she is that girl. She's that spicy, gingery tuberose. And everybody, she's sexy. Everybody talks about her. All that good stuff. And... So this is Rouge a team. So I was like, yes, when I saw the notes, when I saw the stuff about it. But the thing is with the entrepreneurs, they're hard to get not paying retail because they really take a long time to get to the gray market. But let me tell you, I um. I had some ultra points so i had enough ultra points because they they it just dropped there which is very funny because the the the, the givenchy's the launcher these take a while to usually get to ultra but anyway they um they showed it in the new arrivals on my app and i had so many points that and this is the big bottle that i only paid 17 dollars and 56 cents for after using my points so when i saw that it was gonna cost me that i was like girl gonna get it i mean you can't <gasps> i forgot something okay we're gonna do this and then i got another i got something else i totally forgot about because y'all gonna laugh at me okay so anyway i got this i forget what the notes are um hold on let me get the notes for y'all okay so what they're saying this is orange blossom Jasmine Sambach and, and Tanisha Neroli. And then it's got tuberose, cacao pie. So there should be a chocolateiness to it. Some patchouli, ambroxan, vetiver, and tobacco, tobacco. So this is not, I, I like the fact that even though they're calling it that, it's not like they just took pretty much the same uh, DNA and then just, you know, made it similar to Rougie, but something added a little something like it was ginger Ooh, but wouldn't it be like cute with ginger with a little cinnamon in it okay so you know what i'm saying that's that's but so they went totally different now this is by dominique ropion and filippo and any fanny ball I'm, I'm curious hold on let's just see something because i'm curious about something hold on Come on, give them to me. Uh, okay. Why is this say red? Okay, so let me see who made it. Oh, so the same people did do this. I was curious because I couldn't remember who made it. So the same people who did the original Rouge have come back together to do the Ultime. Huh, who knew? Now we know. All right, so let's get together and do this. So we're going to spray it in the box because you know, that's the way we do things. We spray it on the box. I sprayed it on the top. We're going to do a little of this. Hmm. It definitely has the Lantrody DNA. You definitely get that tuberose and even the orange blossom and everything. So, like, if you have Melissima kind of vibes, like, you've got Melissima and that. And it is not spicy. So it's very white florals, sweet white florals. And that's what I'm getting right now, just the sweet white florals. So let's put it on skin. 
see how it feels on my skin. So let's check the bottle. The bottle is a little bit more red where rouge is a deeper kind of more burgundy. This bottle is red. Definitely a red bottle. Kind of, you know, same bottle, same de design, just a little bit different. Okay, so I'm getting the differences on skin. And it's a little more than Neroli gives it a little more of a a sharpness to it which i like i like sharp shit y'all i know some people don't but it does give it a sharpness oh and it has changed it's not coming off strictly like la entre d like the sweet white florals it's definitely got a different edge to it i think that chocolate that cacao is giving it a, a slight ever so slight chocolatey vibe on my skin with it, but it's not a bad chocolate because we know I have issues with chocolate. If you know I have issues with chocolate fragrances, I like them, but it just don't sit well on my skin. No, but I like this. I think it's that that cacao and that patchouli is giving a really good chocolatey vibe with the white florals. Oh, this is good, y'all. Okay, okay. And like I said, there's like this green sharpness to it, which gives it almost a clean vibe to it to me. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I like this. Okay. All right. All right. But I forgot something before I even got here. Let me show y'all the best deal I got recently. Now I'm going to show you the box so you see what was in the box. This is Oriana by Parfums de Marley. Sorry, I got stuff in it. What was sitting here is the 30 mil. Because did you know that the Parfums de Marley now does 30 mils? The 30 mils are $190 retail. Swallow on that shit. Huh. However, I found this on LaBelle Perfumes. I just happened to be watching it. I was looking at them, honestly, for some Latafa, some Maison Alhambras. I've been looking at them and try, hoping they was getting some in. And I found this. It just popped up. This thing for both of them was under $250. I had closer to $200. Yeah, it was closer to $200. I had to buy this. So the reason why this is empty is because somebody got this for a birthday present. Because the price was so good, I was okay with it. You know, I'm... real talk, it was $217. I'm just, y'all my host, I had to tell you the truth. That's how much it was. I posted it up someplace. I was like, y'all need to go and get this if you want Oriana. Because <laughs> was I looking for Oriana? I absolutely was not. That was one of the buys. I was like, the deal was too damn good to like pass up. And what I said to myself is, if I don't like Oriana, I can then sell this and not lose a, a dime on it. Because honestly, I could sell it for the price I paid for the two bottles. I... $2.25. Somebody buy it because the damn thing retails for $3.75. And I haven't even opened. Did I open this one? Maybe I did open. Yeah, I did open this one because this is mine. So I did open it. And I will do a. I don't know if I'm. A, I'm not going to do anything dedicated to Oriana and Ensemble Go, but I will talk about some of the things that we talk about as dupes and are they really the dupes to me? Do they, do they work for me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That the Roly is giving it some. And I got to be honest, the Vetiver is probably doing it too because it is giving it a different vibe. Okay. That's it. I'm done. Yeah, I said I stopped real quick. So I'm about to stop because I was about to start rambling on and I'm already 28 minutes in. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my hoes, be bold, be brave, be fearless, be free. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Talk to you later.